most of my day is something like this. Tons of to-do list items, tons of email and computer work. Just a heaping amount of administrative stuff to get done. I tried playing first thing this morning. I, I'm experimenting with that. Like, you know what, just right away, like 9 a.m. or whatever, get the horn in, in my hands and, and play it a little bit for five minutes just to start the day with that. That was cool. I also was up like late last night while I was uploading last night's vlog. I was practicing transcribing some cannonball laterally, which was pretty fun. I can't bring myself to put the alto away yet. This question came in under yesterday's vlog um, where I was playing confirmation on alto at the end. Steven asked, hi Bob, are you playing out of the Omni book here? I know you don't think working out of transcription books is too useful, which is my, which in my experience is quite true, though there is a place for them. So, though, is there a place for them in your opinion and how best to use them? Hold on. I almost never take this book out, but I did, I, of course, I, of course I have the Omni book. I mean, I never really use it, but I have it. What I have it on hand for is like a reference guide for the melodies of these bebop tunes. So like every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, I wanna relearn that tune or, or learn a new one or like, oh, let's, let me check out Barbados. I mean, you know, whatever, stuff like that. So last night in, or in yesterday's vlog, if it looked like my eyes were somewhere, they were on a stand, I was reading the melody for confirmation. Playing alto is a bit of a weird thing for me because my ears are very linked to the tenor, to a B-flat instrument. So the way that I hear pitch, it's like when my hands are in a certain place on the saxophone, I identify with a certain pitch. So being on the alto, my hands are in a place, but it's not where I feel like they should be based on the pitch. So it's actually really kind of funky for me to play alto. I was reading the melody, but obviously I wasn't playing Bird's solo out of the Omni book, and nor would I try. If I wanna play bird solo, I will transcribe it note for note myself because looking at, at this kind of stuff on a piece of paper is like the fastest way to strike fear into my heart anyway. Look at all these, look at this stuff. Like what are you supposed to do with that information? It's lacking because it doesn't really give you the nuance. Now let me give you an example. I got inspired to check out some Cannonball Adderley last night and I was going through uh, the beginning of his solo off of um, Straight No Chaser from the Milestones album, fantastic album. Check this out, right here. The swing there, the nuance there, the feel. If First of all, if I was reading that, I would instantly find it frightening because I'm sure there would be a lot of clustered black notes fast together and I'd be really concerned with like reading and where is that supposed to go. But if you're just listening and paying attention to how it feels, it's a whole different ball game. And, and that's what I care about is like, what does it feel like and can I get that together? <laughs> I'm gonna play it just by myself and listen to the dynamics. I can't really vocalize it, but I can mentally, in my mind, I am kind of vocalizing it. All that swagger and all the, the dynamics there and all the kind of ghosting of notes and really pushing the air through and forcefully accenting notes, that's Cannonball. I mean, that's the, the language is so much that. If you're reading that on a page, no amount of like written dynamics and slurs and articulations, I don't think is going to give you that. Now, the other thing is I will sit with that little nugget. I'm not concerned about going through through the whole song. I might even make this this month's transcription challenge. Those of you who are watching this who are in my lesson website, because it's about time for a new challenge for May. We did Sunny Stit the last two months. This one is, is adventurous, but uh, the idea is that we will, and I do this with my students for a reason. I do it with myself for a reason. I keep it small and manageable. I keep it on a chunk like that. By playing this over and over, it, it's gonna take you time to get it. It's gonna take days, it could take weeks or days or hours, depending on where you are. But 
once you get it, then you just keep working with it over and over. So I got this last night. I transcribed this last night. Today, I'm coming back to it and it's like, it's a little bit there. I kind of remember doing it, but I'm sort of also relearning it, but it comes back faster. And guess what's gonna happen tomorrow when I go back to the same part? It's gonna come back even faster. And the more I do it, the more I can constant, I can free up brain power to focus on more interesting things. Like I don't have to think so much about the notes or the fingering and I can think more about the placement in time or about the dynamics or about the ghosting, stuff like that, or about the theory of what's going on. Oh, that's interesting. He's going like this and he's going like that. And then he plays this, which is kind of happens to this. And oh, then he goes into that. The goal is not to be, for me anyway, the goal is not to be able to just like say that you can read through the Omni book. The goal is to like have to, to understand the architecture and the thought process behind the blueprint of these great examples. That's, you know, my personal two cents. It is just after 11 p.m. on Tuesday night, May 3rd. I am headed out on the road tomorrow for the rest of the week, but uh, got a lot of work still to take care of, and I haven't even gotten to editing this vlog yet. I would love to get some sleep, but my flight is at 6 a.m., which means I have to be out of here by 4 a.m., not looking so good. Plus, this is another thing you might not know, but who fulfills my CD orders? This guy does. I'm in the process of signing some CDs and uh, sending some CDs out to some good folks who have picked up my music, which is awesome. It's not some factory out in the middle of the country that does this or some record label, just me. By the way, I just realized that today is vlog number 50. That's 50 days in a row except for that one day last week. 50 days in a row, every single night putting one of these up. I mean, I don't know, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's kind of crazy, but kind of cool too. I'm so glad that um, that you're watching this, enjoying it. Uh, I really enjoy the, the back and forth and I'm glad it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really cool to know that it's being helpful and inspiring to you guys. I'm not sure if it's having the the effect that I intended, which was to get myself on some sort of like public guilt trip for me to practice more. And ironically, I, yeah, those hours are being <laughs> allocated to this, but I'm enjoying it and I'm and it seems to be going well. What's the deal here? I look like I'm ready for Christmas. I gotta get some sleep tonight. Travel vlogging resumes again tomorrow. Oh, I put up the next guitar band video tonight. What do we put up? Uh, Crush, that's up somewhere, like maybe over here. So go check that out and you know, help me out, spread it around, do the likes and comments and all that kind of stuff. Much appreciated.